welcome everyone to the brand new session so in this uh, course we are going to learn the data structures and algorithms so before that we need to know what is a data structure is so a data structure is a particular way of storing and organizing data okay it is a particular way of storing and organizing the data either in computer's memory or on the disk storage so that it can be used efficiently the data structures are used in at most every program or software system examples are arrays linked list queue stacks binary trees and hash tables etc now let us look after some of the applications of data structure so the application includes compiler design then os operating system then dbms database management system and simulation followed by artificial intelligence so these are the major applications of data structures so what are the classification of data structures primitive and non primitive data structures so primitive data structures are the fundamental data types which are supported by a programming language some basic data types are integer real character and boolean non primitive data structures are those data structures which are created using primitive data structures example of such data structure includes linked list stacks trees and graphs and further non primitive data structures are can be further classified into two categories as linear and non linear data structure linear data structure includes stacks and queue non linear data stru uh, structure includes graphs and trees so what are the various operations on data structures so moving on to the operations in data structures there are insertion search okay we can search for thing insertion search we can traverse so traversal and then we can also so traversal and then deletion sorting and merging so these are the various uh, operation we can do with this data structure next we have something called as adt that means abstract data type so it is the way we look at the data structure focusing on what it does and ignoring how would does its job the abstract data type is a triple of d set of domains f set of functions and a axioms in which only what it is to be done is mentioned but how is to be done is not mentioned so some of the examples are stacks queues and linked list so in the next section we will see about linked list now we will see about what is linked list data structure is so before that we have to know the uh, structure of uh, linked list so how to declare the linked list so i will write one uh, sample linked list here so sample linked list uh, some code okay so i'm we have to define this in the structure so we have to use the keyword uh, we have to use the keyword struct followed by a node so i can write struct node so inside this struct node we have to define our uh, terms so i have to have a data so what is the data type of the data will be it is an integer data type and then we have to point to the node's next value okay so consider this as a node okay so it has two fields okay this is the value field and this is the address field okay so in linked list we have two fields the first one is a value field and the second one is the address field okay so this is data represents this value and then for this address field it, we have to make it as a pointer 
we have to declare it as a pointer variable so for that again i will use a struct node and then i am going to declare here a pointer variable call star next that denotes this value the address value okay this is the uh, code for defining a linked list so before moving on in depth what is about linked list we have to know the difference between an array and linked list so an array stores its nodes in consecutive memory locations but whereas linked list does not st store its nodes in consecutive memory locations uh, array allows random access of data where linked list does not allow random access of data nodes in a linked list can be accessed only in a sequential manner okay so this is uh, the difference between an array and a linked list so this is the example of a singly linked list so where you can see uh, the values uh, ranges from 1 2 3 and 4 and the last field address it points to nothing right so this x is nothing but it it points to a null value okay so whereas 1 2 and 3 are the data okay and this st start so this is the starting uh, pointer which points to, points to this particular data one so a singly linked list is the simplest type of linked list in which every node contains some data and a pointer to the next node of the same data type so by saying that the node contains a pointer to the next node we mean that the node stores the address of the next node in a sequence a singly linked list allows traversal of data only in one way okay so how to traverse this so in simple i will say how uh, traversing occurs uh, through this single link list so first we have to initialize the pointer as start okay so we'll set a pointer ptr equal to start then what we do we have to uh, check using a while condition so while uh, pointer not equal to null okay while pointer not equal to null what i have to do i have to uh, apply process to pointer uh, to the arrow mark data okay okay this is how i have to apply the process after this i have to set pointer equal to pointer next Okay, pointer equal to pointer next so this is what this line says okay and then this is the end of the loop and then we can exit this okay so this i have to repeat say for example this is step one step two step three and step four so i have to repeat the step two okay repeat steps three and four okay repeat steps three and four while okay pointer not equal to null apply pointer data then pointer equal to pointer next so this is how the traversing occurs in a singly linked list okay and we can also search for a particular value and we can insert a node at the beginning of a linked list we can insert a new node at the end of a linked list and we can insert a node in between the new uh, in between the existing node so for example uh, i have to remove this null pointer and i can uh, instead of this null pointer i have to insert a new element at the end of the linked list so i can insert here phi and then this will point to something nothing right so this x so this will be now the null pointer okay so if i want to insert at the beginning then what i have to do i have to change this link okay i have to remove this link and what i have to do i can remove this link and instead of this i have to say for example i have to insert here zero so it will be like okay zero and this will point to this this one now this will point to this first one okay so what i have done is i have broken this particular uh, uh, link uh, uh, link and i have created a new link at the beginning okay so that i have pointed that new value okay new node to the starter so this is how you have to write the pseudocode and you can program uh, this uh, single linked list okay 
tag data structure so it is an abstract data type okay so as we discussed earlier it is an abstract data type it is also called as the linear data structure okay it is also called as the linear data structure so we have basically two operation in this uh, stack that is uh, push and pop operation so what is push that means i am going to insert an element into the stack and what is pop i am going to delete an element from a stack so now as you see this is the stack okay this is the uh, sorry so this is the stack data structure okay and i have inserted some elements okay so I, first i have pushed 10 so 10 is going to be inserted at year okay then i am going to insert 20 so in so the top value so this is now top actually so when i push 20 top gets incremented and now top points here so this principle it works is the last in first out principle or the first in last out okay we can say it any anyway you can say either last in first out or first in first out so so first i have pushed 10 then i have pushed 20 similarly i have pushed 30 40 and 50 and okay so now the top points at the 50 okay now this is the top now uh, we have to push uh, we have to pop an element so how does this pop operation occurs from here so first it will pop last and first out so which came last 50 50 was inserted first so that will be popped okay deleted first so after deleting 50 40 gets deleted after 40 30 okay like that okay everything will be deleted and finally the stack will be empty so in array representation we can uh, say like if top equal to null then we can say the stack is empty and if top equal to max minus one okay max means that is the maximum element okay in a stack then i can say okay if this condition is satisfied then i can say the stack is full okay uh, so in linked list representation of stack so this is how we have to represent so here i have nine okay don't consider this okay i will erase this first so for example okay i have here nine okay nine one seven three and then three is uh, pointing to this is what null variable okay null point okay null no more uh, link list okay so this is the link list i have and now i want to do pop operation say for example i want to pop this element 9 from this so now my link list after uh, deleting 9 okay after pop 9 okay after performing the pop operation pop of 9 how does my uh, link list uh, representation of stack uh, looks like okay 1 7 okay followed by what 3 anything more no so this will point to null okay this is what null instead of link okay this is what null okay so so previously this was the top okay 9 was the top now i have to assign this one as top so in code okay in code how will you represent this okay in code how will you represent this we have to write a pseudo code for that so how will i write first okay i will write this step one here okay step one i have to check if top equal to null okay if top equal to null what did i said that is the stack is empty okay so that means i have to print uh, underflow okay i have to print underflow okay the condition is called underflow that means the stack is empty so this is end of if then step two what i have to do i have to set pointer equal to top okay i have to set pointer equal to top then after this step three set top equal to top next okay top equal to top next then i have to free the pointer okay for this nine after deleting it i have to free the space so for that what i will do i will just simply say okay free pointer ptr then i have to i can end this 
okay then end so this is a simple uh, pseudo code okay or the algorithm okay for performing the pop operation that is deleting an element from stack okay and also you have to try to implement the, this okay so that it will be easy for you thank you for the section welcome everyone so in this session we will see uh, some of the applications of stack okay so can you say some of the applications of stack so it is used in reversing a list okay and we can use it in parenthesis okay this is e parenthesis checker okay we can use it for uh, conversion okay for conversion of an infix expression to okay infix to postfix expression okay for this and all we can use this stack and then we can use it for evaluation of postfix expression conversion of infix to prefix expression and then evaluation of prefix expression basically we can say we can use this in recursion okay and we can use it in towers of annoy okay we can use it in towers of annoy problem so these are the various uh, applications of stack so we are going to solve a problem okay we are going to uh, convert an infix into postfix okay so uh, we are going to solve this problem so the question is convert consider the following infix expression okay we have to convert it into postfix expression using the stack data structure so the question expression okay the infix expression is as follows a plus b into c minus d now these are the open and closing parentheses okay opening parenthesis closing parenthesis so this you have to note so for solving this so before that we have to know what is an infix expression and what is an postfix expression now this okay this given is an infix expression okay i have uh, the operators in between the operands okay a b c and d are the operands whereas plus star minus are the operators so we have some set of rules for solving this particular problem that is converting an infix uh, converting this particular infix expression into postfix so we will look at the example so what is postfix we have we will have these operators at the last so uh, for example a b plus this is an postfix expression we have the operator after the operands so this is an example of postfix expression now we will start solving the problem so we have to draw a table so first we will have the reading character okay reading character this is one by one we will read it and then we have to draw the stack okay how it is uh, inserted in the push into stack and then we will finally evaluate the we will finally write the postfix expression so first we will read the character one by one so what is the first character opening parenthesis okay but before that we have to say that our stack is initially empty okay so initially we, we will not be reading any input from the infix expression we will say that is stack is empty so how will you draw an empty stack like this okay so i can write the postfix expression also as empty now read the character opening parenthesis so whenever i see this opening parenthesis that time what i have to do i have to push on the stack so push this so my stack now looks like this okay i have uh, push this uh, into my okay into my stack okay but i don't uh, i cannot pop it pop this out okay so now also my postfix expression will be empty now read the next uh, character that is a yes so whenever i encounter an operand then i have to do no operation so this will be remaining as such okay this is the top now okay and instead of pushing this operand into the stack i can 
write it in the postfix expression. Okay. I can write that operand as such. Then what I may I have encountered? Okay. After that, what I have encountered? I am encountering a what? I am encountering a plus operator. So plus. Okay. Now look at the operator which is here. Plus as lower priority than this opening parenthesis. Okay. Plus as lower priority than this opening parenthesis. So what I have to do means I have to push this plus. Okay. I have to push this plus onto the stack. So initially I had this open parenthesis. Now I have pushed plus also. So my stack looks like this. Okay. Now which is the top uh, top of the stack? So now the top of the stack is moved here. Okay. So this is my top of stack. Okay. And what about uh, here? The post week expression also remains A. Next, uh, read the next character B. So whenever I read an operand, what I have to do? I should not push. Okay, I just, I don't want to see any priority. I don't want to push anything. The stack will remain as such. And I can uh, write that operand over here. Sorry. So, so now what I have to do, okay, I can write here B as such. Next, what, I, what do I have, okay, I have star, okay, let me write it over here, okay. Now I have encountered what, star, now write star. How, how was my previously, how was it? Okay, I had, I had open parenthesis and then I had plus. Now look the, sorry. See, uh, we have not encountered this uh, close parenthesis. So before this star, we have to check for this close parenthesis. So close parenthesis, what I have to do? Okay, so I have to, whenever I encounter a close parenthesis, I have to pop all the elements from this stack. Okay. So now I have close parenthesis. So what I have to do is, I have to pop all elements till we reach the, till we reach the open parenthesis. Okay. Pop until Okay, until we reach open parenthesis. So open parenthesis is here. Okay, in between open parenthesis, what we have? Plus operator. So that plus uh, and that uh, open parenthesis has to be removed. So the top of the stack will be here. And what I can do? I have, So what initially I, have, I, I did is, I have pumped this plus out. So I add the uh, postfix expression as AB. Now plus has been popped right now only i am encountering what operator look at here what operator star operator so i have to write star okay now the stack is empty right so what i can do i can push the star operator so this is the top now and what i have to do nothing no change here next i have open parenthesis right so now what i have to do i have to push into the stack i have star now i have this one so top is now this no change here next i have c right c means i have to do no operation okay no operation so star will be here this will be here and here a b okay i had plus now i have to take this c right c is an operand so i have to take this c here then 
then what I have minus d okay then uh, minus I have d I have then close parenthesis I have so now I'm encountering minus what I have to do now minus has low priority than this open parenthesis okay minus has low priority so I have to push this minus onto the stack so I have star already then I have open parenthesis and then now I will have this minus which will be the top of the stack and here it will be remaining as such this is C now I am encountered in D D means that is no operation just I have to okay here I have stack the same stack okay minus here I have to take this operand D okay C and D now I have the closer close parenthesis mean what I have to do until pop all the elements till we use the open parenthesis so open parenthesis here so minus will be popped out okay minus will be popped out so now I have star and only star I have right I have now only only star so star is at star is the top and I have popped minus okay I have pop this minus here now what I have to do means okay pop all the elements till the stack becomes empty so I have to pop this star also okay star also will be popped so my po uh, postfix will look like a b plus c d minus star okay c d minus star so this is my postfix expression okay until all the stack is empty i have to pop okay pop till stack okay stack becomes empty okay take a note of this so this is ambison like i'm i am saying that my stack is empty okay for that i'm using this uh, notation so this is how we have to convert like this so this is a very important uh, problem to be considered
so in this session we will learn about uh, the trees data structure so basically we have to know what is a tree is so it is tree is recursively defined as a set of one or more nodes where one node is designated as the root of the tree and all the remaining nodes can be partitioned into non-empty sets each of which is a subtree of the root so for example if i have uh okay i have like this a okay then i have uh, i have b okay then i have uh, c okay uh, then uh, this b has d and e okay here it has f now this is a tree or not Yes, it is a tree. So, what is the root of the tree? So, A is the root node of the tree. Okay, we say it as a root of the tree. Okay. And who are the parents of A? A is parent. It doesn't have any parent. Okay. Does A is a parent of someone? Okay. Does A is a parent of someone? No, A doesn't have any parent node. So this is a A is a A is called a parent node, root node. What are then what are the child of A? B and C. Okay, child of A is B and C. What is B? B is the left child of A and C is the right child of A. A. Okay. And uh, who are the ch children of B? D and E. D as the left child and E as the right child. So this entirely, okay, this portion, okay, entirely we say it as the left subtree. Okay. And this portion entirely we say right subtree. Do you get it? So this is called the left subtree and this is called the right subtree. So the basic terminology which you have to know is the root node. So which is the root node here? A is the root node. And what are the subtrees? B, C, D, E, F are the subtrees. Okay. Are the descendant nodes. Parent, which is the parent? A is the parent. And what is path? What is path? Okay, this is the path. Okay, we say no. This is the path. And what is uh, sibling? Sibling, sorry. What is sibling? What who is the sibling of D? E. Who is the sibling of E then? D. Sibling of C? Who is the sibling of C? B is the sibling of C. Who is the sibling of A? No one. Who is the sibling of F? Do we have any sibling for F? We have no one. So these are the basic terminology which you have to understand from the trees. And now we will look at the types of trees. So what are the various uh, types of trees? So the various uh, uh, types of trees are, okay, number one, uh, number one, we have the general trees, okay, general trees, then we have something called forest binary trees okay binary search trees what is a binary search tree so what is a binary search tree we'll see that okay we say that is as a no bst and then we have a expression tree and so on so we will directly learn what is a expression tree first okay we will learn what is a expression tree so expression trees so what is a expression tree so it is a binary tree in which the leaf nodes are operands and the interior nodes are operators okay so Say for example the expression tree is AB 
plus c star okay so first what we have to do is the first two operands are symbols are the operands so create a node okay create one node tree and push the pointer onto the stack okay so we have some operands okay we have to uh, in the stack okay i'm going to represent this uh, stack in a uh, vertical uh, horizontal way okay then i'm going to uh, create a two pointer okay and i'm going to point towards okay i'm going to create a node to it as a b and mark this as t1 and mark this as t2 so again i repeat what i have done is i have took the first two symbols okay what are the first two symbols a and b a and b are what they are operand okay so i have created a no one node tree and pushed the pointer onto the stack and i have marked it as uh, uh, t1 and t2 respectively now what is the next symbol plus okay next symbol plus is red so the two pointers are popped okay this two pointers are what done it is these two are popped a new tree is formed and a pointer to this is pushed onto the stack so how like this okay i'm going to have a new pointer okay that is plus so for this the left uh, so i don't have space so let me draw it neatly here okay so i will have a pointer now okay this will point to plus so the left subtree will be t2 and the right will be t1 so what uh, what is t2 here a and what is t2 it is b so this is how it forms next read the next symbol c c is an operand so what i will do okay i will just uh, again uh, next step uh, again i have to read all this and then i will have a pointer like this then it will be pointing c now next read the next symbol that is star okay now that star means we have to two trees are merged and the pointer to the final tree is pushed onto the stack so how it is uh, like this so i am having a okay i am having here uh, star okay and uh, now this will be t2 and this will be t1 right so this you take it to the left plus a b and here i have c alone so this is uh, t2 and this is t1 did you get it so this is how you have to perform the expression tree okay now in this section we'll see uh, what is a binary tree is okay uh, so what do you know about binary tree okay a binary tree is a data structure that is defined as a collection of elements called nodes in binary tree the topmost element is called the root node and each node okay has 0 1 or at most two children every node contains a data element a left pointer which points to the left child and a right pointer which points to the right child the root element is pointed by a root pointer if root equal to null then that means the tree is empty okay so for example let me draw okay i have uh, so consider the following example i have one okay two three um four five six seven eight and uh, nine here i have ten and here i have eleven and here i have twelve so this is the Root, uh, binary tree have so is this a valid binary tree yes it is a valid binary tree what is the root node okay one is the root node what are so this is the left subtree and this is the right subtree do you know that yes so what is the leaf node eight nine 
10, 11, 12. Okay. 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. These are the leaf nodes. Okay. After this, we don't have any more nodes. So these uh, are called the leaf nodes. Okay. So there are few types of binary tree. Okay. They are complete binary tree, full binary tree, and extended binary tree. So complete binary tree means the number of nodes in the complete binary tree are in the range. Okay. The number of nodes okay in complete binary tree are in the range 2 power h to 2 power h minus 1 minus 1. So this is the range. And uh, for full binary tree, the range is 2 power h minus 1 to minus 1. Where h is the height of the tree. What is h here? Height, h is nothing but height of the tree. Okay. And uh, of all the full binary tree, okay, all full binary trees are complete binary tree, but the vice versa is not true. Okay, all full binary trees are complete binary tree, but all complete binary tree is not full binary tree. What about extended binary tree? A binary tree is said to be an extended binary tree if each node in the tree has either no child or exactly two children. Okay, as Okay, as either uh, as either no child or exactly two children. That is what extended binary tree is. Okay, so we can also represent this binary tree is also in the uh, memory format. Okay, we can do that. Now we have a, a traversal. Okay, we can traverse this binary tree. So how will you do the traversing? We'll see in the next. So traversing a binary tree. So there are three ways of traversing a binary tree. That is pre-order tree traversal. Okay, number one, pre-order tree traversal. Number two is in-order tree traversal. And number three is post-order tree traversal. So first we will see the pre-order tree traversal. Okay, that means first I have to uh, I have to visit the root node. Okay, so that is step one is visiting the root node. Then I have to traverse the left subtree. Okay, I have to traverse the left subtree and then finally what I have to do I have to traverse the okay traverse the right subtree so this is how uh, the pre-order tree traversal works and what about in order so for in order we have to traverse the left subtree first okay traverse the left subtree and then visit the root node. Okay, we have to visit the root node and then visit the right subtree. Traverse the right subtree. What about post order? First, we have to do what? We have to traverse the left subtree, then visit, uh, traverse the right subtree, then finally we have to visit the root. Okay, here also I will write pre order that is visiting the root, then traverse the left subtree, and then traverse the right subtree. So you have to remember this uh, how this traversing occurs. Now we will take an exam. We will take an example. Okay. Mm. Like we will take this example first. Okay. Plus here I have minus. Here I have a star. Okay. Here I have a. Here I have B, okay, here C and here D, okay. So this is the binary tree I have. Now I have to find first pre-order traversal. So first, what is pre-order traversal? This is the root node, then traverse the left subtree, then traverse the right subtree. So this is the root node. 
which is the root node plus this d root node yes okay plus this d root node only uh, is only plus this d uh, root node i have here okay root node then left subtree this is the left subtree yes i have moved here okay from here i have moved here then i have encountered what i have encountered what minus so that is the root so i have to uh, write minus also okay i have to write minus also so pl uh, first i will uh, visit plus then i have to visit minus now visit the traverse the left subtree that is nothing but a then traverse the right subtree okay b now in this right subtree traverse the root node first so i will write star first then i have to visit the left subtree then visit the right subtree so this is pre order traverser now find the in order traverser so that is left to root right so first we have to traverse the left subtree okay so this is the left subtree right so i have to visit a left to root so minus yes then right so b then i have completed this entirely now i have to visit the root which is the, what is the root plus now this uh, traverse the right subtree in this right subtree also i have to uh, do left to root right so left is what c root is what star and right is finally d so this is the in order traversal now post order traversal can you do the post uh, post order yes first visit traverse the left subtree then right subtree then visit the root so first left so this is the left so i will go with a then again left left subtree right so after a right right b then root that is minus again left right root so i should not do this okay i have to come here so c d c d then root is star then finally visit plus okay so apart from these uh, three we have one more uh, traversal that is called level order traversal so what is a uh, level order traversal means all the nodes at a level are accessed before going to the next level okay this level is uh, this algorithm is also called is the breadth, breadth first traversal algorithm okay consider uh, okay example consider a b c okay consider this so what is the first level i have traversed a then second level i have first visited b and then only i have visited c so this is the level order traversal to to make it more complicated okay to make it more complicated um, i will give you another uh, example okay let me give you another example so consider a okay b d c e f g h and i now do the level order what is the level order so first i visited a then b then c then d then e f g h and i okay level by level okay level by level i am visiting the nodes that is the level order traversal okay do you understand i hope you have understood welcome back in this session uh, we will learn the very most important topic okay uh, mostly asked in the interviews that is binary search trees okay so what is binary search tree it is also known as ordered binary tree okay ordered binary tree it's a variant of binary trees in which the nodes are arranged in an order a binary search tree is a binary tree with the following properties Number one, the left subtree of a node n contains values that are less than the n's value. The right number two, property number two, the right subtree of a node n contains values that are greater than the n's value.
property 3 both left and right uh, binary trees also satisfy these properties and thus they are binary search trees okay so binary search trees are considered to be effect efficient data structure especially when compared with sorted linear arrays and linked lists in a sorted array searching can be done in order of log n times okay but insertion and deletions are quite expensive in contrast uh, inserting and deleting elements in a linked list is easier but searching for an element is done okay for searching uh, of an element is done order of n times okay however in worst case a binary search tree will take order of n time to search an algorithm search an element okay so we have uh, various operations on binary search okay we have some operations in binary search what are the operations searching inserting deleting determining the number of node determining the height finding uh, largest and smallest element in a binary search tree so first we will uh, we will write a pseudo code for searching a uh, node okay searching for a node in a binary search tree so consider the following uh, tree So consider the following uh, tree, okay, 45, here I have 12, 10, 34, give me a time, I will complete this. So now I wanted to search a node with the value 12 in the given binary search tree. So in this binary search tree, where is 12? Here it is. But how I can traverse till 12? So for that we have to write an algorithm, right? So so which, uh, which is the root node 45 is the root node okay so the left child uh, left child should be smaller than the parent and right child must be greater than the parent so this is the this was a condition so the how to write the pseudocode so first we have to check if tree data okay if tree data equal to value or tree is equal to null okay then i have to return the tree itself right if tree data equal to value or tree equal to null then i have to return the tree else okay else there is some value in the tree then i can go and i can traverse the tree and find the uh, position of uh, where that uh, element is present so now I want to search uh, the node, okay, 12, value data 12. So first I am visiting 45, okay. So if that value, okay, 12 is less than tree data, then what I have to return, return the search element, okay. I have to return the search element, okay. This is the function, say for example, this everything I am giving under a function, say for it is search element of, tree comma value so search element of okay tree left comma value that is i have to search in the tree left okay if the value is less than the data which i am finding then i have to traverse okay search in the left trees left so this is the left right now i am checking 45 is actually greater than 12 so the uh, 45 is greater than 12 or i can say 12 is less than 45 so i have to check in the left subtree so uh, somewhere i will get the answer somewhere uh, i will get the answer where in the left subtree only okay i will get the answer in left subtree so i have to check here so i have moved here okay 39 is it uh, 39 equal to 12 no then again i am uh, 39 is less uh, 12 is less than 39 so i am going to the left child 12 year itself I'm, uh, i have got the answer okay here itself uh, i am getting the value 12 but how to complete this uh, pseudo code else i have to search where in the right subtree no way now 12 is uh, uh, less than 45 so i have to search in the left subtree okay else okay, if 12 is greater than 45 okay now i'm uh, say if i say I am going to search for the element uh, 78 then 45 is 
uh, or I can say 78 is greater than 45, right? So I have to check in the right subtree only. Okay, I have to check in the right subtree here only. I have to check. So return search element of I have to look, uh, I have to traverse in the trees, tree order, tree uh, right, comma value. So end of uh, if statement. Okay, so this is the pseudo code for searching for an element do you get it now we will uh, uh, find uh, okay we will do insertion okay that is inserting a new node in a binary tree so first we will write the uh, pseudo code okay so let me take it as insert of tree comma value okay so what is the step one i have to check if tree equal to null okay then i will allocate the allocate memory for the particular tree okay and then i will set uh, tree data equal to some value then set tree uh, uh, left equal to tree right equal to null okay like this i will set it okay else okay if there is no element okay that if the tree is not null then i have to come to this else part and i have to check if value is less than tree data if value less than tree data then i have to insert in where i have to insert in tree left comma value okay tree left comma value else i have to insert where insert tree right comma value so this is the uh, algorithm or the pseudo code okay this is the pseudo code for solving this particular problem okay now i will erase this as of now okay now i am going to create a binary search tree using the data elements okay so whatever i have to insert is i have to insert first 45 followed by 39 uh, 56 12 34 78 32 10 89 54 67 and 81 okay these are the elements i want to insert it okay i have to create a binary search tree first so first i have to insert 45 so step one i'll just simply put 45 now now step two i have to insert 39 so th uh, 39 is less than 45 so i have to insert it to the left ch uh, left child of 45 right now step 3 i have to insert 56 56 is greater than 45 so i have to insert here 56 then 12 12 is less than 39 so i have to insert it over here yes i have to insert it over here then 34 34 is where 34 will get insert we can insert uh, uh, 34 so can we insert here so 34 is greater than 12 so we can insert 34 over here sorry uh, Okay, we can insert 34 over here. Next element we have to insert is uh, 78, right? We have to insert the next element is 78. So, where is 78 greater than, for, uh, okay, 78 greater than 45, yeah, uh, greater than 56 also. So, 78 will be inserted over here. Then I have 32. 32 is less than 34. So, it will come here. Right? Then I, ha I have 10, okay, okay, less than 12, so 10 will be coming to the left child of 10, okay, I don't have space here, so I have marked here, okay, okay, noted, then after 10, I have to insert 89, 89 will be here, okay, greater than uh, 89, okay, greater than 78, right, so here I will insert 89, then I have 54 so where will i insert 54 
year okay then i have 67 so less than 78 i can insert 67 year then insert 81 less than 89 so 81 so the this is how i have constructed my binary search tree is it correct yes now similarly for this insertion okay uh, we have uh, inserted these all these elements right similarly we have to uh, we have can perform uh, deletion also so for performing deletion we have certain rules we will look at that in the next slide so for deletion okay for deletion uh you have to note down few things okay for deletion okay first one okay that is we will uh, divide into three cases case one is deleting a node that has no children okay deleting a node that has no children okay now consider the example 45 39 56 54 78 and here i have 55 okay now consider this following binary search tree now if we have to delete node 78 okay no if you look at this node 78 does it add any uh, children no so it is very easy uh, we can easily delete the 78 right it is very easy to delete the 78 just i want to traverse from here okay i have to find uh, where 78 is okay from here i will move here then i will uh, tra traverse here so then the, now i have found the value which i want to delete so i can easily delete this node 78 okay and finally it does not going to affect my entire tree right the final tree will be like 45 39 56 does i have anything here no here i have 54 and uh, to the right of 54 i have 55 so this is how my tree is getting transfer so it is very easy to uh, delete a node which has no children now suppose say I want to delete a node with one child okay I want to delete a node with one child okay so case 2 delete a node that has one child okay only one child it is going to have okay I will consider the same example okay I will consider the same example so I will consider the same example okay so this is the case 2 we are going to do okay which has one child okay so suppose say i want to delete say for example i want to delete the node uh, i can i want to delete uh, 54 okay okay where is 54 here 54 has one child right 55 so i want to delete this 54 so how does this change like so 45 will be as such 39 no change 56 yes 56 will be here this okay so i am going to replace this uh, 54 with 55 that's all and here i have as usual 78 does it uh, the uh, so 55 less than 56 and 70 is greater than 56 so there is no change in the rule also right so what i have done is i have just replaced okay 54 with 55 so i have got the answer correct so this is also very easy now step 3 is the most difficult thing like we have to delete a node with two children okay it is not uh, difficult but we have to give some uh, attention towards it we'll see that next slide so now i want to so my tree is like this um now i want to delete uh i want to delete what i want to delete the node 56 okay i want to delete 56 so 56 has two children right 54 and 78 so how to delete so the case 3 is nothing but deleting a node deleting a node with two children 
okay so first how does it go so first i will traverse traverse okay so i will delete this 56 and i will replace uh, 56 with 78 right so i will write 45 here 39 78 will be here so 54 is same here i will have again 78 okay i i want to do some calculation so only i'm putting or i can make this 80 here okay i can make this 80 here and to the left of 54 i have 55 right so is this right yes this is the right one so that is i have taken uh the maximum okay no the least from the right subtree which uh, so i have from right subtree of 56 i have 78 and 80 among 78 and 80 which is the least 78 is a uh, least so i have to replace only with uh, the least value okay i want to delete 56 so i have replaced 56 with the least value in the right subtree that is 78 or else i can uh, replace with the sm smallest uh, like this only i can do okay did you get it so how will i write pseudocode okay you can check how to write the pseudocode for this also okay so thank you so in this session we will see about avl trees so this is also a most important topic in our trees data structure avl tree is a uh, we say that is a self balancing self balancing uh, binary search tree okay we say we can say avl tree as self balancing binary search tree okay which was invented by gm adelson wellesley and em landis okay in the year 1962 they uh, they found this thing okay so in avl tree the heights of two subtrees of a node may differ but by at most one so due to this property avl tree is also known as height balance tree okay we can say it as okay height balanced tree okay so an avl tree is a balanced binary search tree okay the balance factor of every node is either minus 1 0 or plus 1 okay this is the balance factor so for uh, creating a avl tree we have to make sure the tree is balanced and the balance factors are minus one zero and plus one okay so how will you calculate the balance factor is balance factor equal to okay height of left subtree minus height of right sub so this is the formula to find uh, the balance factor okay and uh, we have some rotations okay the tree is rebalanced okay if if i get the balance factor as say for example 2 or minus 2 okay if i'm getting uh, something uh, other than this okay I'm getting 2 or minus 2 then I have to make the tree to balance uh, to uh, as a balanced tree so how I will do is I will perform some rotation operation okay so the rotations are of uh, two types okay one is single rotation and another one is double rotation and further this single rotation I can do it as left rotation okay and here this is and right rotation rr rotation here double rotation will be like left right rotation okay left right rotation and right left rotation so these are the uh, uh, rotations uh, we perform in avl tree and the operations are include searching okay we can search we can insert and also we can delete
now we will see the uh, single rotation so the single rotation is we have two things left left rotation ll rotation and rr rotation so for ll rotation let us consider the following example if i am having a tree like this okay now check the balance factor okay i have to check like this okay it should come here and it should go here so what is the balance fact, uh, factor of this 1 plus 1 that is 2 here this is 1 okay balance factor of this is 1 1 minus 0 okay I, because i don't have any right child right so 1 minus 0 is 1 and here i have 2 2 minus i don't have any right child for this so i have 2 minus 0 equal to 2 so this is balanced but what about this this is not balanced so this 3 i have to balance it okay this 3 i have to balance it so for making that balanced okay let me read on read on that 2 3 2 and 1 so now i have to perform yellow rotation so how does this perform so we have to uh, take the median of 1 2 3 so which is the medium median middle element median is 2 so this 2 has to become now the root okay the 2 has to become the root now so the root will become 2 okay and which is uh, less than 2 1 or 3 1 so 1 will be the left, uh, left child and uh, 3 is greater than uh, 2 so it will be the right child so this is how the ll uh, uh, is performed okay now we will similarly we will do rr rotation okay now for rr rotation we will consider this following example okay i am having a tree like this check the balance factor 0 minus 2 is equal to minus 2 0 minus 1 equal to minus 1 here i have 0 so this is the balance factor and this the tree uh, this and this is balanced but what about this this is not balanced so i have to make it balanced which is the median of this 1 2 3 2 is the median so make it as the root node so left child will be 1 and right child will be 3 so this is as simple as this now check the balance factor 0 0 leaf node is 0 and here 1 minus 1 that is 0 now is the tree is balanced yes the tree avl tree is balanced okay now we will see the double rotation okay now we will see the uh, double rotation okay so how to perform double rotation there are two uh, two ways okay that is left right rotation number one is left sorry number one is left right rotation and number two is number two is what right left rotation now i'll give an example for left right rotation consider this following example okay three uh three year five okay this is five three five and say four okay now this is the tree check the balance factor okay does it have left to right no so zero what is the balance factor of three only one so zero minus one minus one here okay one minus zero sorry i have two right Okay, I, I have 2 here. So 2 minus 0, that is 2. See, it goes 1 left child. And I have right child. Okay, this is uh, like this. Okay, 5 has 2. Okay, height of this 2. So 2 minus 0 is 2. So is the tree is balanced? The tree is not balanced. So we have to make the tree into a balanced tree. How we will make it into balanced tree? So for this left right rotation, first we have to do LL rotation. Okay. Then we can perform LR rotation. How? So for left left, uh, left left rotation, move to the left. So it becomes 4, okay, 5 and here will be 3. Okay, left child. Do you get it? Again, I will do. So, first we will take 
4 will be here, 5 will be here. Okay, here I will have 3. Okay, instead of performing LL rotation, we can directly perform uh, LR rotation self. How? Take the median, okay, of 3, 4 and 5, which is the median 4. So, 4 has to become the root node, which is left, uh, which is uh, smaller than 4, 3, which is greater than 4, 5. Now, check the balance factor 0, 0, 1 minus 1, that is 0. Now, the tree is balanced. Do you get it? So instead of performing LL rotation and then moving on to LR rotation, we can directly uh, do this left right rotation. Okay, we can directly check this uh, left right rotation. Okay, how take the median, take it as a root node. Okay, which is smaller will come to the left child and which is greater will move to the right child. Now check the balance. Okay, it will be zero. The tree is balanced. Okay, so this is how we have to do. Now we will construct a binary tree. So we will construct a binary tree. Okay. So, sorry, construct AVL tree, construct AVL tree, okay, for the following number, 63, 9, 19, 27, 10, 108, 99 and 81, okay. So, yes, so first I have to insert 63, check whether the tree is balanced, yes, 9, 9 will be coming here check the tree is balanced yes the tree is balanced okay so 1 minus 0 equal to 1 the tree is balanced now i have to insert 19 okay 19 is greater than 9 so it will come here to the right child of 9 okay now check the balance factor okay now check the balance factor 0 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 is a uh, balance factor only okay now here it becomes 2 minus 0 so 2 is not balanced right so we have to make the tree balanced so it just has to move up we have to make the tree balanced that is we have to make uh, lr rotation so take the median of this okay what is the median 9 19 63 which is the median 19 so make 19 as the root node which is smaller than 9, 19, 9 and then greater than 19 as 63. Now check the tree is balanced. Yes, the tree is balanced. Next step 4, step 4, step 4, insert 27. Where I will insert 27, 19 will be here. Okay, 9 will be here. Okay, uh, then 63 will be here. Okay, so I have to insert insert 27. Where will the 27 will go? To the left of 63. Check the balance factor. 0, 0, 1 minus 0, 1. Here check the balance factor. 1 minus 2 equal to minus 1. Everything is balanced. So the tree is balanced. Next step 5. Okay. Step 5 insert 10. So where, uh, where will I uh, insert 10? So let me uh, insert it here itself. So 10 will be greater than 9. So 10 will be inserted over here. Is the tree is balanced? Yes. Tree is balanced. Step 6. Uh, insert 108. So where will 108 will go? Where will 108 will go? So 108 is, uh, it is greater than 63 so i can insert it here okay 108 i can insert it here check the balance factor of everything so this remains the same here uh, it is a leaf node so balance uh, factor is zero here so this is also now it is a balanced tree now move on insert 99 so 99 is uh, i cannot insert here i cannot ins i can insert here okay to the left child of 108 is the tree is balanced tree yes the tree is balanced now i want at last insert 81 so where will 81 will go to the left of okay to the left of 99 is the tree balanced okay we have to check here see this is 0 this is 1 minus 0 1 check here 2 okay so 2 minus 0 is 2 so the tree is not balanced okay here this part this part okay this part is not balanced 
okay this part is not balanced so i want to make it uh, balanced so how can i do so this part i have to make it as a balanced tree how will i will do i have to do see how uh, see how it is left left so i have to perform ll rotation how will i perform ll rotation this is actually step okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay step 8 i have to insert 81 so since i have inserted here it is not balanced so make ll rotation okay this part i have to make it as a ll rotation so how it has become so i have 81 99 and 108 which is the uh, median 99 so make 99 as the median okay left of 99 will be 81 and to the right child of 99 will be 108 so this thing i have to implement over here okay so how does uh, the other remaining tree will be same 63 okay 27 okay 19 uh, sorry okay 19 will be here and to the left of 19 what i have 9 to the right of 9 i have 10 now check the balance button. Is the tree balanced? Check first here. Okay. So 2 minus 3. Okay. 1, 2, 3. So 2 minus 3 that is minus 1. The tree is balanced. Check here. 1 minus 2. Minus 1. Balanced. Here. 1 minus 1. Okay. 1 minus 1. 0. 0, 0, 0, 0. Here. Minus 1. Yes. The tree is balanced. So I have found at last I have inserted everything. So the tree is also balanced the AVL tree. So this is how you have to do the insertion. So in this session we will see about the heap data structure. So in binary heap we have. So what is binary tree has? Heap is. So binary heap is a complete binary tree. Okay. Binary tree is a complete binary tree. And it follows two properties. Okay. One is structure property. And another one is heap order property. So heap order property is of two types. One is min heap and max heap. Okay. So min heap is nothing but we have to have the minimum value as the root node. Okay. And whereas in the max heap we have to have the maximum value in the root node. Okay. That max is nothing but the maximum value. And this minimum is nothing but the minimum value. Okay. Hope it's clear. Now we will construct a min heap. Okay. So construct a min heap with the elements 45, 36, 54, 27, 63, 72, 61, and 18. Okay. So step 1 insert 45. I will insert 45. Step 2 insert 36. Okay. 36 I have to insert to the left of. 45 insert 54 i have to insert over here okay sorry we will do it as a first we will uh, do max heap okay so now check okay 54 is greater than 45 so i have inserted to the right child but since this is a max heap i have to have this as the maximum node maximum root so i have to swap these two okay i have to swap these two so if i am going to swap this how i will do so 54 must be become the root node okay 36 will be to the left and 45 will be to the right okay now next i have to insert 27 from here i will do okay Insert 27, I can insert over here. Insert 63. 63 is greater than. See now, if when I inserted 27, I have to check with this. Okay, 36 is uh, big, uh, greater than 27. So, the condition is true only. 63, I can insert 63 over here. Okay, greater than 36. So, I can insert 
63 year but now the condition is not satisfied so i have to swap these two things first so the root will become 54 year it will 63 year will be 27 and year it will be 36 year 45 now again check 54 is less than 63 now this is a max heap right so this has to move here this has to come here okay so my root will become the 63 year will be 54 27 36 and year 45 now check the condition everything is max heap only now 63 where will i insert 63 Sorry, I have inserted 63, then I have moved to 72, sorry, 72, where I will insert 72, to the right of 45, now here the condition fails, so here I have to swap, so I will swap, okay, 63, okay, where will the 72 will be, here 72, and Now, so, uh, seven, uh, 42, right? 45. 45, can I insert to the right child of 72? No. Okay. 45 is less than 72. So, it has to become the left child. Okay, not the right child. It has to move the left child. This remains same. 54, 27, 36. Now again check 72 is greater than 63 so this also I have to swap so you can simply uh, swap this okay 72 year and 63 year now check everything will be uh, max heap only then insert 61 where I can insert 61 to the right of here I have 63 so to the right of 63 I can insert 61 okay and then insert 18 insert 18 so to the left of here I can insert 18 okay so now everything has been uh, balanced yes so everything has been uh, change into the max heap okay so this is regarding the insertion now we will perform the deletion so we will consider the same uh, tree okay like ha I had I had 72 as the max heap 54 27 18 36 63 45 61 okay so this is how i had now i want to delete 72 okay i want to delete 72 so how will i do so Either I can take, okay, less uh, smallest value from the right subtree, or I can take, sorry, I can take the, I can replace it with the smallest value in the right subtree, or I can replace with the greatest value in the right subtree. Okay, but now as of now, let me take okay so it will be like so this has to shift here so 63 54 27 year 36 will move here okay 61 45 45 and then 18 so this will be the deletion operation okay So here basically how what I did is I have taken the uh, uh, the last node okay last node from the 
left subtree okay last node if i see i have that is 18 so i have replaced this with okay 18 then i have to check between this also the i, I should make sure that the binary search uh, binary uh, tree uh, property has to be same okay binary tree property must be same so seeing that only i can able to uh, convert this into uh, okay I, I i can able to perform this deletion similarly we can do insertion and deletion in a min heap also we will see it now so we are going to do insertion in a min heap so what is the condition for min heap okay it should have the minimum value in the root node okay so same set of values i'm going to take 45 36 54 27 63 72 61 and 18 now perform min heap so first i will insert 45 okay next insert 36 now the condition is fails right so i have to swap these 36 45 will be left then i have to insert 54 54 will be here then insert 27 so 27 is uh, smaller than everything right so 20 uh, how we how we have to do first initially i will insert 27 here then swap between these three uh, two 27 will be here 45 will move down okay here i will have 54 okay now this will uh, i have to check between these two so it has to be swapped so 27 as a root node okay 36 here 45 here okay here i have 54 next i have to insert 63 so 63 is greater than 54 okay but i can i have to do here right yes so i can insert 63 so i have to fill as a binary tree okay i have to insert it as a binary tree so i can insert 63 here okay from left to right it has to move okay the tree has to be filled from left to right so 45 here 63 has to be inserted here okay so uh, does i want to change anything no everything is in uh, min heap uh, structure only then i have to insert 72 so 72 will be to the left of 54 okay now i have to uh, check the property okay everything is fine now insert 61 61 i can insert here check everything in min heap yes in min heap now finally 18 18 is the smallest of all the value right so it has to be at the root node so how will you change first so now i want to do a very big operation that is insert 18 so where i will go and insert 18 first first i can insert 18 over here right now i have to swap between these two okay swap between these two so take, let me take another color so here will be 18 here it will be 45 now check between these two so here it will be 36 here it will be 18 yes and check between these two here it will be 27 here it will be 18 now check between these also everything is uh, uh, having the mini property so finally i am having the tree as 18 27 36 45 56 72 61 63 now i want to say for example now i want to delete 18 now what i will do i will take the last element from the node so 45 45 okay now check 45 45 is so 45 where uh, where it has to move So I am going to delete it, right? So how I am going to do the deletion? So it has to be, uh, so everything will move and like 27 will be the, uh, no, 27 will be here. 36, okay, to the left of 36, what I will have? 45, okay? 
here I have 56, here I have 72, here I have 63 and here I have 61. So this is after deleting, okay, deletion, okay, deleting 18. So this is about AVL, uh, sorry, min heap. In this question, we will learn about the graphs. So initially, what you understand by graph? So a graph is represented as the notation is g equal to v comma e, where v is the vertex and e is the edge of the graph. So here I have the vertexes, right? V1, V2, uh, V3, and V4, and the edges are E1. E2, E3, E4 and E5. These are the edges of the graph. So, vertices are referred to as nodes. Okay. And the arc between the nodes are referred to as edges. Each edge is a pair. Okay. Each edge is a pair. V, W. Where? V, W belongs to vertex V. That is, I can say, uh, v equal to v1 w equal to v2 okay so v1 v2 v3 v4 are the vertexes so how will you represent the graph so this is how i will represent the graph okay and here i have the uh, digraph or uh, called as directed graph okay it has the direction so this is a directed graph okay and for example of undirected graph is this do i have any direction no direction means this is the direction do i have any direction okay here there is no direction so that is called as those graphs uh, are termed as undirected graph okay and uh, we have something called as weighted graph so we have some weight for it okay we will have some weight for it for example uh, the weight from v1 to v2 is say for example 3 year 7 year is 8 year it is 9 and year is this. so i am allocating some weight for that graph so we will see what are the advantage so it is very easy simple to implement okay advantages of graph is it is simple to implement what are the disadvantages Okay, disadvantages of using graph. What is the disadvantage? It takes order of n square. Okay, it takes order of n square space to represent the graph, and it takes order of n square time to solve the most of the problems. Okay, now what is called so we saw about weighted graph we saw about undirected graph and directed graph now what is called a complete graph okay what is called as a complete graph so a complete graph is something so a complete graph okay a graph is a in which there is an edge between every pair of vertices a complete graph with the n vertices will have n into n minus 1 by 2 edges say for example v1 v2 v3 and v4 is this a directed graph no it is not a directed graph okay it is a undirected graph and look at the uh, say the graph is complete everything has some vertex okay okay there is an edge between okay there is an edge between every pair of vertices so i can say it is a complete graph so say, uh, can you say the number of uh, vertices i have okay v1 v2 v3 v4 so number of vertices is 4 what is the number of edges? What is the number of edges? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So number of edges is 6. 
so there is a path from every vertex to every other vertex a complete digraph a strongly connected graph so what is strongly connected graph strongly connected graph you have to learn that also right so if there is a path from every vertex to every other vertex in a directed graph then it is said to be strongly connected wise graph otherwise it is said to be weakly connected graph okay so v1 v2 v3 okay so this one is a weakly connected graph and this one is a strongly connected graph i'm going to have like this direction okay now it is a directed graph and it is going to have a loop also then this is a strongly connected graph okay and this is called the path okay path in a graph is a sequence of vertices w1 w2 up to wn such that they belong to e and length means length of the path is the number of edges on the path which is equal to n minus 1 where n represents the number of vertices and this is the loop okay a loop can be like this also okay this is a loop if the graph contains an edge v comma v from a vertex to itself then the path is referred to as a loop okay so these are the thing which you have to know okay and we have to know about the graph traversal methods so now we will uh, we will see about the graph traversal methods so a graph traversal is a systematic way of visiting the nodes in a specific order so there are two types of graph traversal namely depth first search okay or depth first traversal and okay and breadth first search breadth first traversal okay so breadth first search bfs okay it starts from a unvisited vertex u then all unvisited vertex v so now i will write how to do bfs okay so do you want me to write the pseudo code you can write it the pseudo code on yourself okay but i will give the steps to implement okay steps to implement the bfs so step 1 is okay step 1 is choose any vertex in the graph as a starting vertex and mark it as visited okay choose any vertex as the starting vertex and you have to mark it as mark it as visited then what is the step 2 step 2 using adjacency matrix of the graph find all the unvisited find all the find all the unvisited okay adjacent vertex to the starting vertex and enqueue them into the queue okay then the vertex is dequeued from the queue then step 3 is when there is no new vertex okay when there is no new vertex to be visited then the vertex is dequeued then the vertex is dequeued from the graph that is also the important thing that you have to remember okay it is dequeued from the queue then step 4 is you can repeat from step 2 to 3 okay repeat step 2 and uh, step 3 until the queue becomes until queue becomes empty and step 5 is when queue becomes empty then we produce final spanning tree okay when tree uh, when queue becomes uh, empty produce final sp spanning tree by removing unused edges from the graph so when i say it as a 
uh, step implementation you may find it difficult but now you will solve a, a, a problem okay example of breadth first search so consider this following example so this is the example graph now how to do the solution so we have to first we have to draw the adjacency matrix so whichever have the uh, path between them you have to mark it as one in the graph okay you have to draw the adjacency, adjacency graph so first we have to know that bfs is implemented with the help of which data structure with the help of q data structure okay that is why i said uh, nq and dq operation and all so now step one as i said step one is select any vertex as the starting versatile okay vertex and then visit that and nq that vertex to the q nq it so i'm going to uh, take okay a itself i will take it okay i'll start with the a so i'm going to take a and i'm going to nq a also okay a i have nq now step two now check from the vertex a okay at the front of the q visit all the adjacency of a which is not visited okay so step two is from a i have to check the adjacency vertexes okay so from the graph can you say me the adjacency vertices of a okay adjacent adjacency of a i have okay b i have e and i have d also so i can write it as d okay d e and b so all the three are is it visited no so it is unvisited so i am going to visit everything okay all the three are not visited so i am going to visit that okay i am going to visit that so now the q will become a okay d e b okay so from a where i visited d e and b i visited so i am drawing it also okay now i have to dq a from where i found no that i have to dq now step 3 which is the next check from the vertex at the front of the q which is the front of the q now d so vis uh, visit all the adjacent of d which is not visited now which is adjacent of d a e only a e right adjacent of d is only a and e okay a and so adjacency of d is a and e okay a is and e a is visited what about e e is also visited okay both are visited so what i have to do when there is no new vertex to be visited then delete that vertex from the q that is dq of okay dq of d now d is also getting dq okay so the graph was like this the q was like this now i have dq d and the graph remains same only okay and b over here now step 4 now which is that the front e we have to check the adjacent of e what are the adjacents of e d a b c and f okay d a b c f which is visited these three are visited and these two are not visited so i have to visit the not visited also right d so no e b is there already in the queue now i have to visit c and f yes and then i have to d q e so now from a d e f okay from e okay from e i have visited c and f that i have to write and i have dq e also now which is at the front of uh, the q b now we have to find the adjacents of b so step 5 okay let me write the step 5 over here okay step 5 adjacent of b okay adjacent of b which is adjacent of b 
A E C okay so from A E C all are visited there is no vertex to be visited so I can D Q B also you, you have to draw a Q now B also I am going to D Q and then remaining is C and F so first is C so I have to step uh, 6 I have to find adjacent of C adjacent of C is B E and F G okay B E F G B E F okay B E F are visited G is not visited so this uh, N Q G right C F G so G I have visited D Q C okay so my graph will be like here like this okay from C I am visiting G and now I have to find step 7 adjacent of which is a different uh, F so adjacent of F is okay C E G right or E C G all are visited so I can just D Q F then G find uh, step 8 find adjacent of G C F alone okay both are visited so d q g now the, my q is empty okay q is empty so that i can say i have found uh, my q is empty now what i have to do i have to construct the i have to produce the uh, final spanning tree by removing the unused edges from the graph okay now this is the uh, graph i have what are the unused edges that i have to remove so the final spanning tree will look like final spanning tree will look like okay from A to B okay unused so this is B okay A to B then I went to D also no D and I went to E also okay from E I went to C and F right I will write it here C and F okay E I, I went to F also then from C I went to G so this is the minimum span tree. this one this only I have taken and written as like this okay so this is the final spanning tree by removing the unused edges from the graph okay so the applications of BFS is for finding all unconnected uh, components in a graph fi finding all nodes with an individual connected component for finding the shortest path between two nodes U and V of an unweighted graph and finding the shortest path between two nodes U and V of a weighted graph so this is about BFS